Next from Lincoln, Illinois, we take a tour of the brand new Lincoln Heritage Museum at Lincoln College and see artifacts from Abraham Lincoln's legal career and his presidency. This runs about 15 minutes. Hi, we're here at the Lincoln Heritage Museum at Lincoln College in Lincoln, Illinois, ready to unveil our brand new Lincoln Heritage Museum. The Lincoln Heritage Museum has existed at Lincoln College for 70 years, actually 70 years this year. Uh, we were in a different facility for many, many years. Uh, the collection that is now the Lincoln Heritage Museum started with one man's collection, Lawrence Stringer, who is an 1887 graduate of then called Lincoln University, now called Lincoln College. He willed his collection to uh, the college in 1944 if the college would build a museum, and so we did. And so for many years we were in a museum in which we had tabletop display cases with many great items. The problem is, is that we ran out of space. Uh, our collection was growing. We had conservation needs that the old museum, old cases couldn't accommodate. Uh, we had some funding opportunities and all that sort of merged together for a possibility for a brand new museum. In 2010, we contracted with Tater Studios out of Rantoul and they began the design process which leads us to where we are today in our brand new museum. And the museum is on two different floors. It has two different types of design approaches. The downstairs is more artifact based, so the upstairs is a lot more interactive and immersive based. And I'd like to begin by showing a few items here downstairs. Well, we're here looking at some of the items that we have downstairs in our artifact display area. And the first thing I would like to show you is the fact that many of our items here are in conservation-friendly display cases. Taylor Studios specifically designed these cases with our artifacts in mind, and they're very light-controlled, uh, climate-controlled, and as well, it allows us to showcase items in a way that tells stories. We have here behind me a, a table, uh, a chair, and a book. And all these items represent Lincoln's legal career. We also have the heading Honesty and Empathy. What we've tried to do with our items is do two things. Number one, tell stories with the items. Because we don't want them to be stagnant pieces that are just there. We want them to be living things that represent stories about a person's life. In this case, Abraham Lincoln's life. This law book was a very book that Abraham Lincoln used. It's a supplemental uh, law book, and what Lincoln would read through this, it's a case study, and he would actually carry this with him when he wouldn't argue cases, when he was on the circuit, when he was in different courtrooms. So this very book Lincoln would have used. This chair comes from the Postville Courthouse, which was a courthouse on the circuit, the Eighth Judicial Circuit in which Lincoln practiced law. So we have stories about these items, but we also then broaden the stories by talking about the people. For instance, we have John Stewart, Stephen Logan, William Herndon, and information about who these people were and why they were important in Lincoln's life. And as well, we have that merged with character qualities, because in the end, it's the characteristics of Lincoln, I think, that make him great. And honesty and empathy is one of the things that people most noted about him. Samuel Parks, we have a quote here from him that, for 25 years, I knew this man. He's the most honest man I'd ever met. And so we tried to emphasize to the visitor that we have items, we have this man, Abraham Lincoln, but we also have the character qualities that he developed while using these items. While he practiced law, he developed honesty and empathy that carried with him his entire life. Well, we're here in a section we have titled Perseverance and Intellect. And again, going along with the character qualities of Abraham Lincoln, this particular case relates to how Abraham Lincoln developed perseverance and how he developed his intellect. The, the main piece that we have in this particular case is a table that Mentor Graham owned in his home in New Salem. Mentor Graham was a tutor. He was a teacher in New Salem, a very well-learned man. And Abraham Lincoln, who had only had less than a year of formal education, came to New Salem with that lack of education and met Mentor Graham. And at this table in Mentor Graham's home, Lincoln was tutored on math and English and the finer points of philosophy and ethics, all the sort of things that Lincoln himself would internalize and he would use to further his career, but also to further his intellect and to further his character himself. And I can just imagine at this table, Lincoln is pouring over with books on a candle, with a candlelight, with Mentor Graham. Um, and, and I think what's interesting is to juxtapose the table with this particular letter. This letter uh, is a land agreement 
from Indiana from 1819 that bears the signature of Thomas Lincoln. Now, Thomas Lincoln was Abraham Lincoln's father. But what's interesting about it is Thomas Lincoln was largely illiterate. And so all he signed was the little X in between Thomas Lincoln. Lincoln, Abraham Lincoln, became what I would believe to be one of the greatest wordsmen I have ever met. He, the ability to, to put so much words together in, in the way he did, to me, is amazing. But I have to see how, I have to contrast that with the fact that Lincoln came from this. He came from Thomas Lincoln, who was illiterate. And that middle ground between the great wordsman that Lincoln was and his father, who couldn't even sign his name, is right here at this table. I think this is the crossroads. This table represents Lincoln becoming the self-made man and a man who wanted to grow his intellect all he possibly could. But of course, we don't just title intellect, we title perseverance and intellect, because Lincoln had to overcome all sorts of odds to get there. And, and I love pointing on this table, especially to kids, to show, look, Lincoln read. He read all he possibly could. And if you want to become an educated and intellectual person, like we all do, read, for heaven's sakes. Uh, and again, so this table represents so much about Lincoln, but also so much about what life was like in Lincoln's time. You know, one of the things that we have to do uh, in a museum to tell the whole Lincoln story is to become very personal. In the end, Lincoln has to be made relatable, and, and he is a human being. And so one of my favorite cases downstairs is this case here which goes into depth about the personal side of Abraham Lincoln, his family, and, and how he which was personally affected by the war. So let me tell you a little bit about some of the items that we have in this particular case. Uh, the Lincoln family is, is what we prominently highlight in the background. Uh, we talk about Lincoln as a father and as a husband, uh, and we talk about the Lincoln sons. We have here a rocking chair uh, which belonged to Tad Lincoln. In fact, Tad Lincoln had etched his name in the back of the chair with a pocket knife. We, don't, we encourage young kids not to do this when they go home. But the fact is, is that it is a very personal piece of the Lincoln history, the Lincoln family. And these young boys, Willie and Tad especially, were a little rambunctious. And so we say, here is, here's the Lincolns being the Lincolns. Um, also, we have a lock of Willie's hair. And Willie died in 1862 when Lincoln was president. And so a very, very personal piece of the Lincoln story. Uh, another thing, though, I think that makes Lincoln personal in this case is how his friends and how the Civil War merged together. We have a story here of Elmer Ellsworth. Elmer Ellsworth was a colonel in the Civil War, but before he was a colonel in the Civil War, he was a friend to the Lincolns. He clerked for Abraham Lincoln in Springfield and then came out to Washington, D.C. Uh, with Lincolns, played with Willie and Tad when Lincoln was president at the White House. Um, and Colonel Ellsworth, uh, originally from New York, raised a company of zoologists uh, at, to, to volunteer. And then in uh, May of 1861, Lincoln had commented that he could look out the White House window to Alexandria, Virginia, and see the Confederate flags flying. And that bothered Elmer Ellsworth because he knew it bothered his friend, the president. And so Elmer Ellsworth went to the, mo to the hotel, took the flag down, and as he was coming downstairs, was shot by the hotel owner. And this becomes the first death in the Civil War, the first officer's death in the Civil War. And Lincoln was personally affected by it. Uh, there were a company of men who went to the White House, tr tragically, or saw Lincoln after this, and saw how Lincoln was just beside himself, devastated by this particular death. Um, and so the death of the Civil War was something that Lincoln could not escape. Edward Baker, another good friend of Lincoln's, also died in the Civil War, and it became very, very personal. And Lincoln was also very, very accessible, and also one of my favorite things about this case is we have some notes here that Lincoln wrote. And when weeping mothers would come, or there would be uh, men who would come seeking political office, Lincoln would write out the notes. Or if there was someone seeking a pardon, Lincoln would write out these notes, and he would give to them. And, and it became something that Lincoln believed he had to do. Um, he said if if um, these people only want to see me up for a moment, and if they were satisfied, then that is what all I can do. And so again, the personal side of Lincoln really in many ways completes the story of who this man really, really was. Well, this is just a few of the items that we have downstairs on the first floor level of the Lincoln Heritage Museum, so we definitely want everyone to come and see these items and see so much more. I'd like to take you upstairs now to show you the different type of design that we have there. 
Well, we're upstairs here at the Lincoln Heritage Museum, and as I said earlier, uh, we have two different types of approaches to our design. Downstairs, as I showed you, was the more artifact base, which we have collections and original pieces that were related to Lincoln. We also have stories that we talked about with those items. Upstairs, we still tell some of the same type of stories, and hopefully people will see the correlation between upstairs and downstairs with some of these stories. But this is a very different type of museum than you'll see downstairs. We believe a very different type of museum than you'll see anywhere else as well. The upstairs design, we have two different types of modes. A mode where you can simply walk through, like we are right now, with the lights on uh, and objects which you can touch but there's no audio video. But then we do have the full immersive audio video design option in which if a person wants to do that, it's an hour and 15 minutes long and touch points trigger video and trigger audio and things like this. Well, let me tell you about then some of the, some of the items and some of the ways we talk about the Lincoln story upstairs. The Lincoln story upstairs is sort of a life review that we're wanting the visitor to imagine that you are walking with Lincoln He's seen some items that would represent some of the things he may have seen, pictures which are pictures he saw, and objects which you can actually physically touch. We're actually breaking barriers in this museum uh, because we encourage people to touch. Yes, in, in a lot of museums, you know, you could slap the hand for touching things, but actually upstairs, these are all recreations. We actually encourage people to reach out and touch objects on the table or, or, or on the wall. Uh, and as I said, with the audio video design, those are objects which are touch points which trigger, as soon as you touch it, you hear voices. In this case here, the audio video is not on, but you can still touch the objects and I still think get an, a sense of what Lincoln's life was like. The room we are in right now is a recreation of his office. The, the cabinet room, Lincoln's office, which is now called the Lincoln bedroom of the White House. And throughout this particular room, there are ample opportunities for people to sort of see what Lincoln's life was like as president. We hear stories, for instance, about Mary Lincoln. And we hear stories about the differing views of Mary Lincoln. Because the reality is, is we don't want the visitor to come away with this view that it's crazy Mary all the time. We have, for instance, six different views of people. People who did say that Lincoln, uh, or that Mary Lincoln uh, was, was I think one quote says that she was a short, fat, underbred woman. But we also hear another woman say, you know, Lincoln, Mary Lincoln was a woman of class and she was very elegant. Uh, we hear John Hay, one of Lincoln's secretaries, talk about how the Hellcat is getting more Hellcatical day by day. But we hear Lincoln talk about, I fell in love with this woman when I was young and I've never fallen out. We also talk about in this room about the sorrow of Lincoln. You know, when I told the story of, of Elmer Ellsworth earlier, we hear the story of Elmer Ellsworth again in a different way. We hear the story of Edward Baker dying, Willie dying, and we also hear Elizabeth Keckley's voice talking about the sorrow that just gripped Lincoln. And this was a room that he never really could escape the war. This was his war room. Yeah, he did go to the telegraph office, he did go to the old soldier's home. But this is a room that we want the visitor to get a sense of what it was like for Lincoln to carry the burden of the Civil War on his shoulders. We have a Civil War tent for people to sit inside and watch a video about the Gettysburg Address and to see moments of the Civil War. We also have touch points that talk about the first inaugural and the second inaugural, which were Lincoln's writings. And so we hear again the Lincoln's voice and we can, and we can read some of those very words which defined American history. And this is just one of the many rooms that we have upstairs and many opportunities for a visitor to come through and to get a get better appreciation for what Lincoln's life was like. Well, we also tried to then to recapture what the room may have really looked like. And one of those things that we have is, for instance, a picture of uh, above the fireplace mantle of Andrew Jackson, former president of the United States. And uh, we are often asked, well, Lincoln actually had a picture of Andrew Jackson, who was a Democrat, above the fireplace, and the answer is yes. Uh, he didn't put it there. It was actually a picture that was already hanging there uh, be before he became president. Uh, but those are the sort of questions that we love to get, and we love to have visitors come and see these things and ask those sort of questions for us. We invite all of you to come see the Lincoln Heritage Museum and see what it has to offer. So we hope you come soon, bring your friends and family, and so you can learn more, uh, learn from Lincoln and live like Lincoln. You're watching the Illinois Channel, an independent nonprofit corporation formed to provide gavel-to-gavel -gavel coverage of Illinois state government 
and other public affairs events taking place across Illinois.